Yu-Gi-Oh! players have come and gone since the card game's TCG inception in 2002. Whether it be aging out of the game or simply running out of peers to play the game with, people are always leaving Yu-Gi-Oh! However, those former players always seem to find their way back to the game at some point. And one of the first things these people do is ask, how much are my old cards worth? They see videos referencing expensive Yu-Gi-Oh! cards and they believe they might have had those cards. Nine times out of ten, these players don't have the cards they think they had, but occasionally, some players know they are sitting on gold. In in today's video, we talk about a guy who did have an expensive Yu-Gi-Oh card, but not just any expensive card, a one of one. Tyler, the Great Warrior. What's up guys, today we are viewing one of the craziest Yu-Gi-Oh events to ever happen. So because I know the man himself, Simo, I had heard an inkling of what might be in this video, but I don't know a lot about this, but we are about to see the rarest card of all time go up for sale. Well, let's not get into it too much until we see kind of what's going on. I want you guys to make sure to go check out Simo's video to watch the whole context. We won't be showing the whole video here. I'm just gonna be reacting to a few things that come up in the video and then talking about what this means that Tyler the Great Warrior is now up for sale. So I think first and foremost, we should start off with, uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Okay, I'm Tyler Gressley. Um, a lot of people know me as uh, Tyler the Great Warrior. Wow. Tyler the Great Warrior, this is insane. So if you guys don't know the story of Tyler the Great Warrior, back in 2002, Tyler was diagnosed with cancer. So Make-A-Wish heard about Tyler's predicament and basically gave him the opportunity to make his own card. And it looks like he actually got to design it and they kind of like, obviously he didn't just draw it, they put it on there, but they kind of like reformed it or whatever. And then they actually gave it the name Tyler the Great Warrior. He didn't make that up, which he just said in the video, but he got his own one of one special card because he had this cancer and this issue. But the cool part, as you guys see, he actually made it through the cancer. He made it through the fight and he also got this crazy awesome Yu-Gi-Oh card. And that's what we're watching about right now. And if you guys remember, I did a one of one video about the one ring coming to Magic the Gathering and how crazy it is. This is even crazier. This card actually was given him August 5th, 2005. So we're talking about like an 18 year old card at this point versus the one ring, which is a brand new card. So this is a one of one. It has a massive story behind it about a kid who was diagnosed with cancer, had to go through such a difficult time and was given an awesome a make a wish opportunity to get a Yu-Gi-Oh card with his own name on it. So there's a lot more to dive into, but I want to see what else is in the video before we keep going. I mean, this just tells the whole story. Here. Oh, there it is, guys. So are you just a big uh, Future Trunks fan? I was saying this before. It's very Dragon Ball artwork. I mean, he made it up, so he was probably watching Dragon Ball all the time, you know, when he's having to go to the hospital all the time. That's what my guess would be. He was probably really into Dragon Ball and he also loved Yu-Gi-Oh, so he kind of mixed them together. My journey really started in 2001. I was initially diagnosed with undifferentiated sarcoma of the liver. Eventually they told me about Make-A-Wish. I told them I wanted to make this and they flew us out to New York, uh, my dad and I. They introduced me to the artist. Dude, he has some flow. Look at this flow. Dan, look at Dan and Eric. Oh my gosh, they look so young. That's crazy. They contacted me and first thing, first thing I wanted was a Porsche, but I wasn't <laughs> old enough. So, <laughs> so his, his options were Porsche, Yu-Gi-Oh card. Second option was Yu-Gi-Oh card. I mean, I guess the Yu-Gi-Oh card might actually, I mean, when this thing goes up for sale, it might actually be worth more than a Porsche at this point, which is pretty wild to think about. I um, drew this, always been inspired by Dragon Ball Z and stuff. I loved Yu-Gi-Oh so much. So I was like, man, I can combine the both if I can do whatever yeah, I want, yeah. you know? So. so it was actually, he literally had it in mind. I want to make a Dragon Ball Yu-Gi-Oh card. That's what he That's what he did. And that's what the title of the Great Warrior turned out to be, which is amazing. At the time, who wanted a wish to design his, his own Yu-Gi-Oh card. And I remember thinking, I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> that's hilarious. It was one of the first requests like that we had gotten. He had no idea at the time, like, and nobody really did, like how crazy this Yu-Gi-Oh and trading card stuff would turn out. But it's crazy to think that this is one of the like most valuable potential things you could ask for. Like he wanted to ask for a Porsche and that was like, you know, probably like, a, what I don't even know how much those cost, but tens of hundreds of thousands, I don't know how much those are. I mean, he could have asked for so many different things, like to meet somebody or to like, you know, go to a baseball game or something like that. But he asked for a trading card, which at the time people were like, really a trading card? And now it turns out to be like one of the craziest collectibles in Yu-Gi-Oh, probably the craziest collectible. And now we're going to see what it ends up going for at, when it goes up for sale. We know this wasn't actually uh, Tyler's first request for Make-A-Wish. Why'd Gage get to be here? What's up with that? 
Gage gets to be on the call? Come on, so unfair. In uh -oh. retrospect, and you can be honest, mm -hmm. do you still wish you got the Porsche? Uh, in retrospect, no, no. Um, I don't wish I I got the Porsche. I still would have stuck with the card for sure. I didn't even think about the, the portion of like, not just getting the card, but I didn't know initially that he actually got to design the card which is even almost a cooler thing that he personally got to decide what the card looked like. And the more I'm listening to this, the more that I'm realizing that it wasn't just about like having a card with his name on it. It was actually getting to make his own card and it be a real card, which if you think about it, is pretty amazing. So curious, when when they first approached you guys about this, what did you guys think? What was your first thing? That came Dude, I, I was like, we absolutely need to get them here no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because this is the holy grail. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so they're saying this is the holy grail. This is why I wanted to make this video. Uh, one of the reasons. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Is this the coolest, holy grail, rarest card ever? I think we can confirm that from what I've heard, I think that they actually go into this a little bit in the video, but I think this is definitely a one of one. There's only one of them and there's no other Yu-Gi-Oh card like that. Even if you go to stuff like Cyberstein where there was a hundred of them or all those SJC prize cards and stuff like that, there's no one of ones. Even in Pokemon, when you go back to the Pokemon Illustrator, there's like 20 of those, 25 of those. There's one of these, there's only one and it has such a crazy story. This could be the Holy Grail if you're looking at collectibles. Then you gotta ask yourself like, well, you know, it's not as known to a lot of people, but I, at this point, I think the lore of it has actually become so well known that maybe at this point it actually is the most known Yu-Gi-Oh card. So I don't know. Just let me know in the comments what you think about that. When they printed it, did they, it was it just on this one sheet? Cause I, I'm pretty interested in the production on it. So they just made the one, uh -huh. cut it out, put it directly into the case. No okay. one, uh, as far as I know, no one's touched it with their bare hands. Gotcha. What? Oh, okay. So they, as he, as I said, they, I think they mentioned this. It they made one only. It's never been touched by bare hands. Whoa. Okay, so they put it in the case and he never took it out. That first of all, smart. This is a smart kid, but uh, he's not a kid anymore. He's he's my age. But wow, that is incredible. That's incredible restraint. To be honest, you you design your own card and then you just leave it in the case. That's thinking ahead, man. He's smart. Okay. We have this concept art and stuff. Well, they said, does this? Whoa, okay, so this is what it could have been. Honestly, this looks sweet. He's got the sword, he's got the, the fist going here. I like this, that's cool. One, or this one look good to you, and that's And then he, of course, liked the Dragon Ball stuff, so he went with this option. Wow, that's, they're both really nice. So both of those that we have, those are, were both done by Kazuki Takahashi and mm -hmm. those were the two. So they're done by Kazuki Takahashi, which of course the legend and RIP, he had recently passed away, but amazing. Those look so good. At one point we talked a little bit about what attack level I wanted it things like that. Oh, interesting. He got to pick the stats, which of course they had to go with 3000 to match the blue eyes white dragon. I mean, you can't be under the blue eyes white dragon. I remember back in the day, they were so hesitant to put stuff at 3000. They would have like 2950, 2850, 2900. They would put so many cards like that because like all oh, blue eyes too powerful. Can't be up there at 3k. If you look at the card, it doesn't like correctly totally sit in there, right? Like if right. you hold it up, does that make you at all nervous of how it will come out? I'm interested, what will this grade? It's never been touched before, but it's in one of these interesting cases, as they mentioned, that you really don't know how well it preserved it. I'm guessing if it's Beckett, you guys know how I feel about getting nines at Beckett, but maybe they'll get lucky. Imagine if this got like a BGS 10, that would be insane. So I did see them press and mint the card, but it was behind glass. You got to watch them make it? Oh my gosh, it's crazy. From my memory, I don't remember it being that um, as awe-inspiring as you thought it might be. It was kind of just like, psh, <laughs> yeah, well, I would expect it not when you're like, you know, 14 or whatever, you see the card get smashed or whatever, and you're like, okay, whatever, you know, no big deal. But now like that, we're all like super nerds and we love all this trading card stuff. Like to see something like that would actually be an insane experience. Like just seeing like a Legend of Blue Eyes sheet, like being printed or whatever would be crazy. And seeing this is like next level. Do you know how many copies of the card were actually printed? There were two mine at four kids. It is the only copy. The only copy this is the, the thing that i have to make a huge takeaway of is like when we're talking about rare collectibles this is the rarest there's no one of one we've already mentioned this but this is the only one and the only reason there's only one is because it was for a make-a-wish thing if it was for like actually selling it they would have made more or even sjc prizes they got to make more so it's just an insanely unique situation that it never happened for pokemon or magic they didn't have like a, a make-a-wish thing that i know of like this it's just insane okay so this comes off Oh no, 
Look at the back of it. It definitely, okay, as you can see, it's it's definitely not like minty minty. So we're probably guessing like, I'm gonna try and guess the grade. I don't know if like, I mean, they, they have some incentives to be like, you know, actually it's a better grade. But I guess with that back, like I wouldn't even have that like a near mint card, but like, it depends on what the rest looks like. I would be so nervous. Like this guy, I would've been freaking out if I was this guy, like having to actually touch this card for the first time, you know, be really careful around it. So he did a good job. He didn't like damage anything from what I saw. So we're good. I I wonder, okay, I wonder in these grading companies, I don't think they actually do, but do you think they have like, okay, this is a very expensive card. So we're gonna have like the, the top level grade or grade this one. I figure they do, actually, I figure they probably do that. I don't know. All right, guys, we're back. What do we think of grading? I don't know, man. I, I'm, a, I'm gonna. I like to be optimistic. I really want the black label, but I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna be conservative. I'm gonna say it's a 9.5. I don't think it's a 9.5 based on the back that we saw. I bet it's like. I would guess like an 8.5. So when we are grading, we grade off of four categories: so the centering, corners, edges, and the surface of the card. I think what's gonna hold this card back is the back surface. The the centering looks pretty good. The corners, I mean, I can't really look at it. I'm just looking through this video, but it looks pretty clean on the front. So I think the back's what's gonna hold it back. And then, so we ended up with a seven. seven. Okay, I knew I was being optimistic. The surface, the surface is what killed this. I guarantee it. Nine five on the centering, eight on the corners, eight five on the edges, and then a six on the surface. Six on the surface, that back, it was the back. But I'm surprised the corners were that bad. I didn't see that. You can actually see a crease going through it. So this is like disappointing and all for like the grade, but in all honesty, the grade doesn't matter at all because this is a one of one card. It's the only one that exists. It doesn't matter if it's a 10, a seven, a six, a five, a one. It's all the same thing. Really the, the grade here, like, oh cool, it's in better condition. But when you have the only one that exists, it really doesn't matter what condition it's in. I wanna part with the card now after so much time. Uh... I think there is a good chance that this card it doesn't go up for sale again because if the right people go for this which i think everyone that's interested in this card will know about this auction if the right person gets it they're not going to want to get rid of it they're simply collecting because they want the rarest Yu-Gi-Oh card so this might be the only opportunity ever to get this card which is pretty crazy i want to uh, own and operate my own business to also help my community pretty wild that he's actually putting it up for sale but i totally understand where he's coming from he's like look i've had this for 20 years it means a lot to me but I will always be tired of the great warrior. Like even if I don't have the card, so it makes sense. He wants to like move on, you know, maybe not move on. That's not, not the right word, but he's ready to go and like start his family and stuff. So it's, it's crazy. I, I'm so interested to see what this is gonna go for when they sell it. So I do think the most fitting name is Tyler the Great Warrior because what better name would I have come up with? Uh, especially as an 11 year old, you know, at first I was like, oh. Okay, so he was 11 at the time and then 14, I guess, when they printed it. Cause it was 2002 when he was diagnosed and then 2005 when they printed it. So that makes sense. Yeah, 11 year old, what's it gonna say? Uh, you know, I really had overcome this crazy journey. So I really was a warrior over this. And uh, I think especially now, um, over the years and growing so much just as an adult and over time that I couldn't, I couldn't have picked a better name, that that was really, really fitting. Wow, this is an incredible story. And now they're auctioning it off. Tyler the Great Warrior will be hosted on eBay beginning April 19th, 2023. We are definitely gonna be following that auction on this channel. We're gonna see what it goes for. I want to know in the comments, what do you guys think this is gonna go for? Because if you remember the Legend of Blue Eyes case that sold a year or two ago went for over half a million dollars after the buyer's premium. This is a much, much rarer item because this is a one of one there were there was tons and tons of legend of blue eyes printed there was one of this printed so if you compare those two it's like will that get to that 500,000 will it get to a million dollars even I don't know let me know is that crazy to think that a Yu-Gi-Oh card could go for a million dollars we've seen the black lotus in magic go for what a million dollars with the signed one and that's not a one of one there was 1100 of those rares obviously not all PSA or BGS 10s or whatever it was but this could be the most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh card I can almost guarantee that because at the moment we don't really have a card over like two hundred thousand dollars and I'd be surprised personally if it didn't go over that we could always argue the blackluster soldier card that's a one of one but i still have never seen any evidence and look we have an entire youtube video about this card about how it's a one of one about it being graded and everything like that i'm super excited to see what this goes for make sure to go check out cmo's full video because you only saw part of it here most of it was just me talking about the theory of the card how much it's going to go for tyler himself and stuff like that if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like this well maybe not like this because this might never happen again so maybe other content similar to this how about that shout out to 
Bronze, Toe and Foe Show, Daxter, JT, Cho, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto, Deanda, Dizzy, Hoppus, Choice 333, Michael, James, Jance, TCG, Trust of Cards, America, Deutzer, Supreme Sage 21, and then the Tai Show, Ian Musa, Junior Barding, Mimic Gecko, and Thomas McLean. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.